you know what sucks is when you come from watching a really good, heartwarming, funny episode from Fruits Baskets, only to come to a heart pulling, depressing, but yet well executed episode such as JoJo. It's it's mixed feelings. It sucks because it's sad, but at the same time, it makes it all so so good. And what I'm trying to talk about here is what happened from beginning to end. I was gonna make the Danish title smooth criminal or something from how well the boss of the gangs has been sneaking his way out, always having luck on his side, just like Kira is. Another dude who wants to be in control of his own life, but at the same time wants to be left alone. Risotto went out with pride. He did. He tried so hard to take down the boss, even it meant um, pulling him closely so Aerosmith will come in and shoot him up, but it was too late. King Crimson was in full control and therefore he failed. And the way he escaped was so villainous. This is something that I do like out of the JoJo villains, is that you see them struggle. You see their perspective and what they have to go through. They're not this all the time like this invincible, mighty force that no one can stop. They themselves have their challenges, their own struggles, and it develops them as a, no, have to be relatable, but at least a realistic and that's the problem that most fictional stories have, is that when it comes to an antagonist, the antagonist always has to be this invincible being that only the main character can stop. But in this one, no, it's actually, um, he could have died if it wasn't for luck of Aerosmith. He did plan Aerosmith to go that way, but still, if it wasn't for them being there, Risotto won one. So let's just keep that in mind. It makes great story writing, and it makes a great villain. So you have this hope that he can be taken down, but it's going to be really, really hard because it's how smart this villain is. To the point where he was able to switch his body between a child tourist. Think about it. This is a little kid, and he sewed his mouth, took away his clothes, and just left them there, about to be destroyed by Aerosmith or Sticky Fingers. One of those two stands were about to take him out. It wasn't for um, Bruno telling Naracha to be extremely cautious. That's, that's sickening. It's just, uh. But then again, it makes a great villain at the same time. So, when you are discussing with your villain, they're doing a great job. Now, with the second half of this episode with Abakio. Abakio was my least favorite character of the group. But besides that, I did respect his character nonetheless. He, he was my least favorite, not because I liked the character. He rubbed me the wrong way. I understood his reasons. And I still understood his reasons even more when he showed his backstory. He is a man who doesn't want to screw up, a man who has his doubts because of his past, that he will eventually screw up, but he doesn't want to because he doesn't want to betray his comrades or his own code anymore like he did in his past. He wants to make up. He seeks that sort of redemption. Because of that, he's always cautious for Bruno and the gang. That's why he was so stuck up and um tight when it came to Giorno because he was new. He knew he could trust him. His behavior was very strange, so therefore he wanted to be, you know, act like an actual right-hand man. Some say, yeah, Bakio was a pain, and I, you can admit that, he was. But at the end of the day, that was the point. That was his character, and no one could take that away from him. And because of that, you could respect him. Heck, he was there trying to do Moody Blues in order to find out the identity of... Or at least something of the boss, boss's identity, and the way he got caught, no one could have seen coming. One of the main things in this world that everybody doesn't suspect, even people, soldiers who go over to other countries sometimes don't expect, is for children to be the dangerous ones. A lot of people don't suspect that. So, 
And because of that, a lot of children were able to kill people. But this wasn't really a child. We all know that. But they were disguising themselves as a child. The owner of King Crimson was. And only because of that. And when looking at that, you see a kid, when you see a group of kids trying to get a ball and they're being annoying, making all the noise, you would try to help them out. It's a natural reaction for most normal people. So you can't blame him in this downfall. You really can't, because it's very natural. You know, you expect it's just a coincidence. These kids are here playing around the ball, because, you know, it's a beach, and kids play. So to see that, of course, all the other kids were normal, but one, and that was the boss who switched himself with the other child. So his way of death was fast, but yet so sudden, but impactful, showing how quickly you can be taken out by this dude if you're not careful. If you let your guard down just for a little while, it's over. And, that's, and that was the terrifying part about this. Now, the sentimental part was not his death, but was the execution of his death. What happens afterwards is what really drove in the impact for everyone. Was well, so him sitting at the cafe and and seeing the fellow officer that died because of his mistake in the past. And for him to have that closure of the officer himself saying, you are forgiven, you've done a good job, you have redeemed yourself. That could, that made him to move on. It made him feel better, like your comrades, your friends will carry out your will and they will find the truth that you are searching for. So you can rest easy and believe in your friends. That's what drove it home right there. The death thing, yes, it's sad when you see the death. Horrifying, terrifying. But what hurts the most is the impact, the, the reaction of it. The action, then the reaction. It's the reaction is what people really affect from. Is how they handled the death. For instance, last time I really felt sad about JoJo death, like really sad. It was, I believe, it was with Caesar from Battle Tendency of Part Two. You know, that was a very sad, and emotional death. Because even after death, he holds. In fact, almost every JoJo. When a member in a JoJo game dies, they do this tradition where they hold on something to give the others hope. Um, let's see, I can't... The first one, the first seizure in Phantom Blood was to help him finish off the other vampires for Joseph. Part 2, it was Caesar taking the antidote for Joseph. Part 3 was Kakuen discovering and giving clues to Dio Stan. Part four is where um, Sengechi carried the button that Kira had that was on his jacket. And now we're on part five where he hold a piece that belonged to the stone, which they followed to find out the face, the fragmented face of the boss. And they discovered who it is. Well, not everything. There's no a glimpse of the face. You know, like when someone puts their face, their hand or feet into a clay and it shows the imprint of it. That's what they got. So that thing right there, he has become the person that gave off the clue in order to help out the gang to continue on their journey. It seems like there's always this tradition, this repeated loop inside of all the JoJo series that happens every single time. If you think about it, it's not just that, but other things as well that goes through it. That each of the Joe stars have to go through. And I do remember seeing a video in the past with um, Tree Sickle saying how that it is a never-ending repeated loop that's going on in a way. Not repeated loop, but more as it's a tradition how things work out. Despite how different the stage is, how different the characters are, some things stay the same, whether it's stands, hormone, vampires, or other stand users. Something always stays the same. So that interested me most. So yes, this was an amazing episode. Plus it in the second best, the second best death in JoJo for me. Um, a lot of people do agree too, after all, that this was probably one of the second best death. Because first of all, I didn't really care much about the character. So for me to respect the character at the very end like that and feel to feel something for them, you did something right. 
So therefore, good job the productions, the animation, the music, the art direction, the way you went with it was just a swell job right there. And I enjoyed this episode. So tell me how you felt about this episode. Was it just spectacular or you can just say, yeah, I saw it better. And if you did, let me know in the comments below. So anyways, as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon to get notified every time I upload. Macro Man Man, sign out.